Okay, so we're now going to build a jQuery back to top button. And you can see at the moment I've got quite a bit of content on this page, just dummy content. Uh, when I go ahead and scroll down, you can see this little button at the bottom appear. And that appears, uh, you know, you can gauge this of when you want it to appear. But it's appearing pretty much when a user would want to go ahead and, and go back to the top. So this is obviously styled with CSS and we're all we're doing is uh, positioning it with CSS and then showing it at a certain point. We're not, we're not inserting this with jQuery. But when we are scrolled down and we hit back to top here, you can see that goes ahead and animates us back to the top of the page. So it will scroll back to the top of the page. And because we have uh, checks in place when we're scrolling within our, our browser window, uh, this will automatically disappear when we get back to the top. So this is really easy to implement and you can see here we get a nice animated effect when we scroll up. So let's go ahead and build this out now. So the first thing that we really want to do is go ahead and style this button up and then what we'll do is we'll bring jQuery in and then we'll attach the appropriate event handlers. So when we scroll it appears and when we click it we're forwarded back up to the top of the page. So let's go ahead and build an anchor here with a class of back to top. What we're then going to do is just add in a hash to this. Uh, it's not linking anywhere, so we'll just include a hash for here. And then for the text in here, we're going to say back to top. So this is semantically correct. We have an anchor here rather than actually some kind of div element or, or something like that. So let's style this up. At the moment on the page, you can see it just looks like this. Not great at all. So we need to create a new folder for our CSS files and you probably already have a style sheet in your application already, in which case just uh, add it in. And in here, I'm just going to call this global.css. I'm just going to pretend that all of my styles are in here. So what we want to do then is obviously target our back to top button and we can start applying the styles we need here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the positioning. That's going to be a fixed position. This means that we can use the top, bottom, left or right properties in CSS to position this somewhere on the page and because it's fixed it will not scroll with the rest of the page it'll always stay within uh, the position you give it in the, view, uh, the viewport so I'm going to say I want this to be 20 pixels from the bottom and I want this to be 20 pixels from the right so as you can imagine that uh, then goes down to here so while we're at it let's just add some content to the page just so we can see how this element interacts with the rest of the content so I'm going to create, say, 100 paragraph tags, and within these, let's put some lorem ipsum. And again, I'm using Emmet to generate this, so quite a lot of content on the page here. So you can see that the link at the bottom right-hand corner now is staying in its exact position. So all we need to do now is just add a few more styles just to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to set a background color for this, and I'll choose something like cornflower blue. And we'll give this 20 pixels padding. And we'll set the foreground color here to white, just so we can see it a little bit better on that text, uh, on that background color. So we've now got our button. That was fairly straightforward. What we now need to do is by default hide it. We don't want this to be uh, visible by default. So we're going to put a display of none on there. And when we refresh, that obviously goes. So a user can scroll up and down as normal and that won't be in the way for the whole time that they're looking at the content. So now what we want to do is apply the jQuery snippet here to control this. So I'm going to pull in jQuery from Google hosted libraries. You can download jQuery and host it on your own server, but for now, this is a lot easier. So over on Google hosted libraries, then I'm going to pull in the uh, jQuery 2.1.1 and I'm just going to paste that into a, a source attribute of a script tag. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a custom JavaScript file. This might be something that houses all of your JavaScript. And I'm going to store this in a JavaScript directory. And I'm going to call it global.js. So we're following a little bit of a pattern here. So I'm going to create a new folder called JS. And inside here, create a global.js file. Like so. And in here, we can write all of our JavaScript rather than doing it in line on the page. So the first thing we do then is wait till the DOM's loaded. So we use the document uh, object here and we use the ready method. We have a callback function in here that will run when everything's ready to be manipulated. 
So what I want to do then is grab this element here just so I can access it uh, depending on whether it's clicked or if we want to do something with it when we scroll. So I'm going to create a variable just here called BTT for back to top. And then I'm going to use a jQuery selector to select that by its class. So that's obviously back to top. So now we have that element ready to go. We can do what we want with it. So we need to attach an event handler now to the window object. And what's going to happen is the event handler is going to be for scrolling. When the user scrolls anywhere on the page, so up or down, this event handler will be fired. So an event will be fired here. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll take this uh, one step at a time. So window, and we use on to attach an event handler. And this is on scroll. And then once a user has scrolled somewhere, we have this callback function within here. So let's say, for example, I just do a console log on scrolled, for example, just to output the string scrolled. You can see if I just bring up my console, so in, in developer tools here, and you can access this from this menu if, uh, if you want. When I scroll now, you can see that that string is being output constantly. So we're getting a lot of output on this string. So from this then, inside of here, we can grab the position that the user is at on the page and then go ahead and actually scroll. So what we want to do is we want to grab the window so we can detect the height and the position the user is at from the top. So I'm just going to create a variable called self and then reference this, which is this here. So now I want to determine the height because I've stored self up here. It's really easy. I can just say self dot height and then I can also get the position scroll from the top so I'm going to call this top and I'm going to say self dot scroll top so let's play around with these just so we can see what it's what's being output if we do height uh, you can be fairly sure that that's going to remain the same so 268 here if I pull this down a bit you'll see that that value changes so we're grabbing dynamically the height of the window we're also grabbing this top value here and this is obviously going to change as we scroll so you can see that that's the position that we're currently scrolling from the top so that's really useful because now what we can do is detect when or, or decide when we want to show the button so you can play around with this and depending on when you want it to display you can show it but if we do an if statement here we can actually check if the top is greater than the height so I'm saying when this scrolled value is greater than the entire height of the window, I then want to show the button. But we don't want to show the button unless it's already invisible, uh, unless it's already visible. So we use an, another if statement, and I'm going to say if not, button, or BTT for back to top, is, so we can use this handy is method, and then we can say visible. So if it's not visible, we then want to show it. So we say btt.show. Now, if the top is not greater than the height, so we use our else here, we want to hide it. Easy. Now, obviously, what you can do is you can use something like fade in or any other jQuery animations. But for now, I'm just going to hide it and show it. You can play around with this. So now what's going to happen is when we refresh and we scroll, you can see that it shows. And then when we come back up, that else then kicks into place and makes it disappear. So we've now got the basic functionality of our back to top button. And in actual fact, if you do click this, because we've got the, anchor, uh, the href attribute on our anchor set to a hash, this will actually redirect the user up to the top of the page. So really now this is fine. If, if this is acceptable to you, you can go ahead and use this solution. But we're going to add a little bit more in here just to um, animate the scrolling to the top of the page. So we need to attach an event handler to the button itself. So we're going to say btt.on, much like we did with the scrolling on the window. But this time it's on a click. So on a click, what do we want to do? We want to scroll to the top, but we need to use the animate method and then pass the scroll to top property through to this object. And that probably sounds a little bit more complicated than it is. We need to target the HTML and the body here. And we're going to apply the animate method to this. So we can pass in an object with our animation properties. 
In this case, I want the scroll top position to be at zero. That just means take me to the top of the page and animate this at the same time. Now, the second argument of uh, this method is the speed in which you want this to happen. And this can be a string like slow or something like that. But in this case, I'll just pass 500 milliseconds in half a second. Now, what we also want to do, we'll see a little problem with this in a moment if we just refresh. Uh, we'll get the effect that we're after. But if you look very carefully, let's say I scroll down to here, watch what happens when I actually click this button. You'll see it flash a little bit like that. Now, what's actually happening here is we are not preventing the default behavior of this button when we click it. And the default behavior of the button is to push us right to the top of the page because we have that hash as an anchor, as the href. So what we want to do now is inside of our callback, we can pass an event argument and we can prevent the default behavior of this button when it's clicked. So all we need to do is say e prevent default. So we use the prevent default method and that's going to stop the default behavior when we click it. And like I said, the default behavior is to jump to the top of the page. So this will still work because we've explicitly defined that we want an animation to scroll us to the top. But now when we click it, notice that it's very smooth. We don't get that uh, button flicker or anything like that. It just scrolls nicely to the top of the page. So that's the entire effect completed. But just a little word of warning, if you are pulling in jQuery just to do something like this, it's probably a good idea to evaluate whether you need to pull in jQuery for such simple effects. If you are already using jQuery on your page for lots of things, this is absolutely fine because you've already pulled in the library to be able to do that. So with that in mind, we've built a back to top button that animates when we click it.